G'day everyone. Today I'm going to be giving you five red hot tips to help you achieve success when you're trout fishing in lakes. Rightio folks, welcome to Lake William Hovel. This is one of my favourite spots. I love it up here. It's a great redfin lake in the warmer months and during the winter it's a great trout lake. Now, today I'm going to give you five tips on how to increase your, your catch rate and, and achieve more success in these trout lakes such as Lake William Hovel. The very first tip, and it's one that most of you will know, but newcomers to the sport of fishing may not, and that is water temperature. I'm not gonna go into specific details and go down to 0.4 of a degree and stuff like that. Basically, all I need to say is that trout are a cold water species and you catch them in the winter. Now, here in Australia, most of our popular trout lakes like Lake Eildon, Lake Hume, Lake William Hovel, Lake Dartmouth, they are great in the winter months when the water is cold. During the summer, when the water gets really warm, the trout will go down deeper in search of cold water. And that's what makes trout the most popular fishing species during the winter months. So you need cold water. In the summer months, you'll still catch them in lakes, especially alpine lakes, such as Lake Katani at Mount Buffalo, Rocky Valley Dam and Pretty Valley Dam up at Falls Creek, and even Lake Eucumban and Lake Jindabyne. They're at quite a high altitude and the water stays quite a bit cooler, and they'll fish well for trout most of the year but for most of the lakes these subalpine lakes such as Lake Dartmouth or Big Brother Lake William Hovel they're very similar these two lakes winter is the ideal time to chase them when the water is at its coldest now tip number two applies to all lakes whether it's a great big deep lake with steep sides or just a small shallow lake such as Cancoban Pondage with a great weed bed and a lot of aquatic growth or a, an alpine lake up above the tree line, it doesn't matter. This goes for all lakes and that is low light. Trout don't like bright or direct sunshine so you focus on the low light periods. It's in lakes such as Lake William Hovel Early morning is my favourite time to catch trout, and that's when I have the best success rate. Early morning and late in the evening at sunset. So sunrise and sunset, and also overcast days. A day like today, where it's quite dark and gloomy, I would be more likely to have a better catch rate in a lake such as this than what I would be on a day of bright sunshine. So focus on the low light periods of the day and try and time your days, if possible, to overcast gloomy days. Foggy conditions are just fantastic for trawling for trout during the day because they, low, they like the low light. Once that direct sunlight comes out, the trout will go down deep. And this leads me into tip number three. Rightio folks, tip number three is to look for shaded areas. Obviously you only get shade on days of sunshine. Days like today there's the shade everywhere because the sun's not quite out. Although I think it's not far away for the first time in about a week. I have to tell you it is bitterly cold as I stand here at Lake William Hovel at the moment. But during the day look for shady areas. Now some lakes don't have shady areas because they're open and they're, they're flat and they're not all that deep and there's not much you can do about that. But in lakes with steeper sides like Lake Yildon, Lake Dartmouth and here at Lake William Hovel, look for the shady areas. Now in this particular lake, this western ridge over here, these, these, these mountains over here on the western side of the lake, they will start casting shadows or shade onto the water a good two hours before sunset. So at that time of the day, even though it's not the twilight time of day that I like, You've still got a couple of hours to fish along the shaded sections. And in a lake like this, I find it's better if you fish along the shaded edges over there. As the sun goes down, the shade extends across the lake. You can cover more water until sunset when you can then start covering the whole lake. So tip number three is where possible, seek out those shaded areas, shaded valleys, against steeper hills because that is where the trout feel a bit more confident to come to the surface or closer to the surface to feed on sunny days. <music> Next 
tip number four. Now I'm going to talk about lures. What lures are best to use in lakes? First I'll talk about boat fishing. If you're in a boat and you're trawling, it's very, very hard to beat winged lures such as Tassie Devils and Candlesticks and Tilsons and stuff like that. In fact, I made a video last winter about trawling for trout with winged lures and I'll put that description in the top of the corner right now, on the top of the screen right now, and you can check that out. But winged lures are very hard to beat. They don't dive down deep, but they have a very erratic action. And there's a whole different variety of ways that you can fish them. And they account for more trout in lakes than probably most other lures. Minnows. Small minnows can be very good for trawling as well. Things like the wild bait. You know I love wild bait minnows. I made a video about them last week. This is where they come into their own. Because they're very lifelike. They're very natural looking. They've got a great colour range. And they just swim like most other minnows. But you could use a variety of minnows. You could use Rapalas or Pontoon 21s or anything else. But minnows are probably my second favourite trawling lure for trout in lakes behind Tassie Devils. Now if you're bank fishing, Probably my favourite bank fishing lure in a lake is a 7 gram blade. TT Switchblade is probably my favourite in a red or a peacock blue colour. I like the blades because they cast so far. You can trawl with them if you're in the boat, but they're not the best trawling lure. But from the bank, blades, they cast far, they cast, a 7 gram blade will cast a lot further than a 7 gram jig head with a soft plastic because it doesn't catch the wind, it cuts through the air. And that's why I like 7 gram blades. Once you start getting high into the 12 and 13 gram blades, you're start, starting to get a, a bigger lure and trout don't always like to go for bigger lures. 7 grams, a great average size. From here I'll be using a 7 gram switch blade, I'll be casting it a long way out. Or I'll go a soft plastic, you won't get as much casting distance, but soft plastics work really well for trout at any given time. Probably go for a 7 gram jig head, maybe a 5 gram, but 7 gram will cast further. And then following that, I'd probably use a Tassie Devil from the bank as well. Tasmanian Devils or winged lures in general, they're not the best from the bank because they're not the best casting lure. Because of the wings that actually help them cut through the water, those wings will cut through the air as you cast. So your casting distance is sacrificed, whereas the blade just cuts through like a hot knife through butter. They're fantastic. So if you're trawling from a boat, try winged lures first, try minnows. And if you're off the bank, try a switch blade, a TT switch blade or some other kind of seven gram blade or a soft plastic or a, Tassie, a winged lure like a Tassie Devil. Number five, tip number five is the bait. If, what if you're bait fishing? Well, there's a whole variety of baits. Trout like all different sorts of things, but with trout, we all know that it's critical that we match the hatch. We give the trout what's in the system. At the moment, there's not a lot of food around that they might be eating on. We haven't had a lot of rain, so there's not gonna be a lot of worms washing into the system. I find in the winter, I've had some good luck with mud eyes, particularly at Cancoban Pondage, which is a shallow lake with an extensive weed bed, ideal for mud eyes to hatch and turn into dragonflies. The problem is that the mud eyes don't hatch this time of the year. They hatch in October. So it's very, very hard to find mud eyes. Whenever I go to Cancob, and I normally stop at Bluey's Bait and Tackle in Madonga because they often stock mud eyes, but try and find a tackle store that stocks them. You might be able to go out and get a few yourself, but they are hard to find this time of the year. And if you can get them, mud eyes seem to work well in winter despite the fact that there's not a lot of dragonflies around. Worms are a very good bait. I quite like worms, but usually after a lot of rain. Now, we have not had a lot of rain in this area. This week, we've had probably, or in this area up here at the lake, they've probably had a couple of inches. That might be enough to wash a bit of topsoil in and there may be a few worms in the system. So right now, today, it might be worth fishing around river mouths with worms for bait. Had we not had that rain last week, I reckon you'd be really struggling to catch a trout on worms. But you might, if we get a heap of rain this weekend and there's dirty water flowing in, by all means, worms, worms, worms. But I'd be looking for mud eyes, maybe worms. And don't be afraid to use other baits that you might use for redfin. Things like freshwater shrimp. Trout will eat freshwater shrimp. They will also eat yabbies. I've gutted plenty of trout with yabbies. And I tell you what, have you ever gutted a trout and found that it's got that really orange flesh? Some have a pale white flesh and some have quite a, an orange flesh. That orange in that flesh comes from eating crustaceans, shellfish, yabbies and shrimps. So 
when you haven't had much rain and it's too cold for other crickets and grasshoppers and stuff, don't be afraid to try small yabbies or small mud or, or small shrimps because they will work very well on trout. They're probably an underrated trout bait. Rightio folks, so there's five tips that will hopefully help you increase your trout success rate when you're fishing in lakes. Try, make sure you get there before sunrise if you can and trawl that magical hour and a half to two hours in the morning when the light is really low and trawl with a winged lure such as a Tassie Devil. Hot pink is my favourite colour. Now, or a little minnow and then try and fish on sunset as well if you can. During the day the trout might go down deep, you might need a deeper diving minnow, you might even want to use a downrigger. Talking about downriggers in the summer when the surface water is much warmer, that's when you might need a downrigger. Places like Dartmouth, trout can be caught all year round, but you need to get your lure down really deep, and the only way you can do that is with a downrigger to help get down to where the fish are. So I hope this video has given you quite a few helpful hints. Good luck when you're out trout fishing, and I tell you what, these subalpine lakes aren't very warm folks. My other tip, tip number six, is to make sure you take plenty of warm clothes and rug up because it is cold enough to freeze the pricks off a barbed wire fence up here at the moment. 